Hey everybody, this is Randy with uh, Talking Sci-Fi and we're at Batman Day in Bartow and I have here with me... Harvey Bullock. There you go. Uh, Harvey. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I haven't, I haven't had my six beers yet in the morning. <laughs> Jimbo, Jimbo promised to bring in some beer this morning, but he's missing. I think Scarecrow's gone and buried him again. I gotta go dig him up. I agree. We're gonna have to find him. Hope he yeah. broke more than six beers though. Well, hey, right now he owes me a tw uh, he owes me a kegger. Oh, does he? All right. At this point. Yeah. Awesome. That is fantastic. So tell me why this cosplay? Why? Why? So what's going on here? Well, uh, I was a fan of the TV show Gotham. Yep. Uh, Donald Loge was brilliant uh, playing Harvey Bullock on that mm -hmm. show. Yeah. Um, and I'm a huge fan of Batman. I was ever since a kid uh, yeah. reading the comic books and uh, getting into the. Um, just the just as they were doing the uh, post crisis stuff and right. uh, Frank Miller's uh, Dark Knight Returns came right. out, so kind of got into that. Huge fan, ba Batman fan. So um, when it comes time to doing cosplay, mm -hmm. um, I can't fit into a Batman outfit, but I can fit into a Harvey Bullock. There you outfit. go. All right, I, I use yeah, that so, same excuse. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, sometimes for cosplay, it's just simple. As yeah. long as as long as it's something that's kind of in a real world setting. That's I right. Mean, for noir, uh, even for the co comic noir that yep. uh, Gotham was. Right. You know, all you gotta do is just get a beat up trench coat, a beat up hat. That's right. Uh, you look grow your hard. grow your beard out. Get a little more cynical about life. I need more coffee, man. I need more coffee <laughs> before I solve any crimes. <laughs> that right. always helps. That always helps. Okay, so your favorite Batman actor? Oh, uh, you know, you got so many of them. Um, but uh, no, for, for acting, uh, I was there when they were uh, casting for the 89 movie Batman. It was okay. like Michael Keaton. It was like everybody was freaking yeah. out that it was, oh my God, it was Beetlejuice. But um, in terms of like the, the actual intensity of the character, mm -hmm. uh, Michael Keaton really nailed it. I right, liked, yeah. I liked his performance. Um, now, uh, well, let me ask you something. I was a little younger then. Was he a high profile actor at the time? Kinda. I won't. I won't say he was like a, an A-lister, but he was a he was a recognized name. Right. Uh, but the thing was, he was he was known mostly for uh, comedic roles. Mr. Right. Mom, uh, Night Shift with yeah. the, with um, it was a Ron Howard movie with Shelley Long. He was right. in that too. Um, but the thing was, that he was known for for manic comedy roles. Yeah. Um, so for him to play a comic book character, everybody was kind of worried that it was going to be like the '60s camp all over right. again. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, but no, he was uh, he he played it with the kind of the the, the quiet calm, the the sort of like right. um, the sheltered kind of performance that, right. that that you would see out of a Bruce Wayne. He he played Bruce Wayne more than he played Batman. Yeah, I think yeah, I got movie. you. Yeah, uh, and in that regards, he actually he actually did a very good job. Mm -hmm. I mean, so for the others that kind of came after, right? I mean, some of them may have physically looked the part. I mean, Michael yeah. uh, George Clooney, not Michael. George, George, there's is there a Michael Clooney? Anyways, <laughs> George Clooney, George Clooney may have physically looked the part right. based on the comic books, but um, he just didn't have that that persona. He yeah. was just. Um, I think in his his case it was like a little more smugness. Yes. I yeah, mean, so I, so yeah. like for certain roles like the the Danny Ocean, the mm -hmm. Ocean the Ocean trilogy. Right. I mean, he was perfect for that. Right. But as a Batman, couldn't really couldn't really sell it. Right. I got you. Um, right, so back to Keaton real quick. Yeah, Keaton. Did, didn't he star in a movie where he was like in charge of like a Japanese car plant? Uh, what gung ho? Is that what it was? I, I remember was. that as a and kid, was, and that was one that was of my favorite Howard, movies. That was another Ron Howard movie. Yeah, too. It, yeah. They don't really, they don't really show that much anymore because um, it was, it was kind of a topical movie for the time, and some of the jokes about it have not aged well. Right. Yeah. So they don't really, yeah. it's not something you really see on television right. anymore. Yeah, I just remember but, as a kid that was one of my favorites. So Ben Affleck, and Ben Affleck. What about Ben Affleck as Batman? Ben Affleck wasn't too bad. I, I mean, agree. there was a, there was. A, I know one of the part. One of the things was also uh, we haven't even talked about Christian Bale. Right. Uh, and I think when you look at how Christian Bale played it, uh, the fact that he was able to play out a full arc for the character. When right. you look at the whole performance, then yeah. you kind of see where he was going with that. Yeah. Um, that there was this sort of like this uh, wounded intensity. Right. Um, for him, but it's uh, and then they, they replaced him with Affleck, who again kind of cut, went back to George Clooney in right. terms of the. The, uh, sort of the, the vibe that he sort of smug this right but um, I mean in terms of the actor he wasn't too bad I think the problem with those movies especially B Batman v Superman was that the plot right uh, kind of compelled and forced characters to behave in ways they shouldn't have right. yeah. so I don't 
I don't think uh, Ben Affleck was the problem for the Bat uh, Batman Superman fight or the right, yeah, uh, Justice I got League movie. That, that wasn't the problem. It was just the scripts needed work. Right. You know, I completely agree with you on that. But let me ask you something. So you've heard the news that J.J. Abrams has been signed to for do, DC. They haven't said it. He, he's for signed. scripting. I've I've heard that he's like scripting some comic books. I haven't yes. heard the specifics. Well, right. Exactly. But. Uh -huh. I think if they could pull him in, I I would. I know a lot of people don't like him, and a lot of people think he's ruined the Star Trek reboot. But I think DC could use him as a writer. Yeah, and I think he's going to do everything right. Is he going to, or well, is he just writing? Um, I'm not sure how. I mean, I know his work more as, more as a director than as a writer. I'm not yeah. entirely sure how he how he writes per se. I know mm -hmm. how he directs. Um, I can't really say anything about Abrams. If if I had my druthers about who would be writing um, Batman, mm -hmm. I mean I like Tim Sale. Yeah, uh, he's been he's done uh, some good work. Um, I'm trying to think about who would because part of the thing about um, Batman is is that there is that sort of uh, the noir element, the fact that it's at night, it gets shower, shadows. It's like the right. the gray and gray morality of, mm -hmm. of the, the, the with the criminals. How they're driven, how Batman's driven. Right. You kind of need to have like the right, right uh, writer for that. Yeah, no, I completely um, agree. And he's more upbeat and uh, li more light. I don't know if I, uh, if Abrams is light. I mean, because because he does. Uh, I mean, he's he's done dark movies. I mean, yeah, the Clover, he has. Cloverfield. Yeah. yeah. So the, um, I mean, the, so darkness for for Abrams is not a problem. I think it's just um, the overall tone, the overall vision. Yeah. For DC uh, comics, if it's for other parts of the DC universe, like Wonder Woman or, or Superman, yeah, probably Superman. He might do a good Superman, right? But in terms of Batman, you want somebody who has sort of a, I wouldn't say cynicism, mm -hmm. but I would say um, sort of a. Uh, there's there's got to be a word for it. The, you're uh, right. but, I know but what you're talking about. Yes. Shadow. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, Shades of shades of gray to it. Yeah, um, and it's just because uh, part of it too is, is for for all the stuff that Batman is. Uh, one of the things about the the comic books nowadays is that the villains are as much as the, of the story as the heroes are. Right, and you're Harley, right. Harley Harley is now a dominant character. Yeah, um, it, you know she shows up in the comic books more than uh, than Batman does now. Yeah. Uh, you know, and so, and the other villains have kind of like reformed. Bane's been back and forth on the right. fence. I mean, he's a villain now, but he was a hero for a while, that sort yeah. of thing. You know, Poison Ivy is now yeah. more of a reformed character. So, there's, um, there's, there's more going on outside of Batman in terms of Gotham than yeah. Batman. So, um, it's kind of hard to see the expanded uh, an expanded universe like that working with a darker or grittier Batman, yeah. which is what you kind of need. Yeah. Because that is that is who he is. He's the he's right. the shadow hero of DC. Yeah. yeah, I got you. One of the things that I always had issues with with the Batman movies is I feel like the police the chases in the Batmobile and the bikes are always look like they're in slow motion. Are you talking about like the in the the Nolan trilogy? Yeah, or? yeah. I just I feel like, well, they they don't use the, the speed aspect as good as most other action movies. Because I'm an action well, type I, guy. Well, action movies are one thing, but one of the things about the uh, the thing about Batman in the movies, especially the Nolan trilogy, it plays out more like an opera. It plays yeah. out more like a mm -hmm. tragedy. Yeah. And so we're not looking for the, to these movies for the action set pieces. We're looking. Uh, to these movies for um, sort of like the um, the emotional kicks, yeah. The you know the the for example the the dread of whatever stunts uh, yeah. Joker's pulling off. Right. Um, I mean, half the time in those movies, anyways, the, the fight scenes with uh, the Batman with the, all the mooks and, and you know other bad guys, right. you really don't see much of that. Yeah. What you usually see is like the. The side effects, the surrounding effects, the, yeah. the aftermath of uh, right. you know, all the damage that had been done. Yeah. Um, so the the point of those movies wasn't necessarily so much the action. So I didn't have any problem with the the stunts or, or the, the action right. scenes in those movies because they are kind of more grounded in a real world. Yeah. Than they were in an, a comic book. Right. I mean, it's. Um, 
everything in that movie, it's, it's all the, especially all the advanced technology stuff, yeah. is relatively grounded mm -hmm. uh, in in real world technology. Right, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we're not going to see a, a car chase where the the Batmobile is going to go up the side of the building. Yeah. I mean, it, right. Yeah, that's where things kind of got off the rails there. Right. <laughs> um, but the the thing is. Um, Again, you have to look at the whole trilogy. You have right. to look at the, the, the whole movie. Um, and, and like I said, it's an opera. Yeah. So it's it, uh, action. You know, I didn't watch uh, the movie for um, the action pieces. I, I watched the movies for sort of like the the emotional grounding. Right. Yeah. Emotional, I got you. Emotional, oh. emotional uplift from um, the moment in the Dark Knight when the the, the, the two boats yep. with the bombs and mm -hmm. the, the ones convicts and the other ones, um, you know, middle class. Absolutely, families. very powerful scene. And very right. powerful scene. There's no action there. Yeah. It's basically it's just everybody arguing over whether or not they should. They should and throw everybody the watching's hearts beating also. Yeah. Yeah. So that's you know that was yeah. the key moment in the movie. And the, mm -hmm. I mean, um, when it was Tiny Lister. I mean, when he, he he stands up and he says, you know, give me give me. That I know what to do. I know That's what right. to do with it. Yeah. I do. I'm going to do what you should have done ten minutes ago. I mean, I sat up in the chair going, because oh that my was. God. I know what he's going to do. He's going to yeah. throw it out the window. Yeah. And he did. Yeah. So that was you know, but that was that was the big moment in Dark Knight for me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that so, was all fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know the the fo the following scene of that was Joker looking out at the boats and thinking, why isn't one of them blowing up? Yeah. Because everything that he had he had played up to. Trying to turn That's Gotham right. against itself, and that moment, nobody was playing his game, right? And it threw him off. Yeah, and it was that was that was the moment, the turning that, point. Yeah, the, absolutely. Where he lost. That's yeah. the moment where he lost the movie. Yeah. So.